Now I'm excited to introduce John Zuris, our next speaker. John is an Associate Director of Editing Technologies at Editus Medicine. Hello, my name is John Zuris, and I'm an Associate Director leading our Editing Technologies team at Editus Medicine. At Editus, we focus on using the power of CRISPR gene editing systems to potentially address a host of serious diseases affecting patients worldwide. I want to take a moment to thank the GenScript team for organizing this conference and for enlisting a great group of both established as well as up and coming experts in the gene editing field. And I'm looking forward to their presentation. Today, I'll be giving a presentation on the results of a highly productive research collaboration between Editas and IDT, where we show that an engineered AS capsule nuclease can potentially facilitate the rapid generation of therapeutic cell medicine. So I'm required to disclose that I am an employee and shareholder of Editas Medicine. So here I'm presenting an overview of what I'll be covering with you today. First, I will discuss the general attractive features, but also the potential shortcomings of ASCAP 12A and how this motivated the work to engineer a version of this nuclease that has both high activity and high specificity. Knowing that such an achievement would permit a highly attractive alternative to SB Cas9, which suffers often from low specificity. After highlighting the results from this effort, I will show you how this nuclease compares to other engineered Cas12 nucleases in the field and why this engineered nuclease from our collaboration is more attractive for typical editing applications one encounters in the cell therapy space. Last, I will show uh, what those potential cell therapy applications look like and how this engineered Cas12A nuclease should potentially be the preferred uh, nuclease for the generation of gene-edited cell therapies with a focus on T cells and especially NK cells. And before diving into the work, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the key contributors in this effort, highlighting both Liang Zhang and Chris Vakulskis at IDT for leading the directed evolution efforts to first identify this more active variant, for doing all the gene editing work in cancer cell lines, and for running the biochemical specificity assays. On the edit task end, I want to acknowledge Ramya Vishwanathan, Jasmine Edelstein, Sarali Lele, and Sean Scott, my group, for their outstanding work demonstrating multiplex gene knockout and knock-in in primary cells. And last, I want to acknowledge Kevin Wasco, Stephen Sexton, and Chris Borges for their work in designing and performing the tumor killing assays for NK cell knockout and knock in efforts. So, we and many others in the cell therapy field believe that multiplex gene editing is key for the next generation of cell medicines. Here are two potential applications which I will briefly walk through. The first being an allogeneic T cell which is a T cell that presumably could be obtained from a healthy human donor, edited to avoid potential graft versus host responses arising due to the endogenous TCR on the surface of the human donor T cells, recognizing the patient cells as foreign and triggering an unwanted response against the cells and tissue of the patient. It is widely believed that the key edit you need to make here is knockout of the tract gene, which should lead to absence of the TCR on the surface of the donor T cells. In addition, it's also widely believed that any T cells you deliver to the patient from a healthy donor have a risk, a high risk of rejection by the patient's own immune system due to antigens being present on both MHC1 and MHC2. As a result, we and many others have proposed that, that knockout of B2M and C2TA genes will lead to elimination of MHC1 and M2 from the surface of the healthy donor T cells. So with these three edits, TRAC, B2M, and C2TA, it is expected that the T cells will be able to both avoid attacking healthy tissue in the patient, while also being protected themselves from the T cells of that patient. Allogeneic T cells could then be leveraged by themselves or with further edits, such as incorporation of a chimeric antigen receptor or a CAR, and used in applications ranging from addressing autoimmune diseases to attacking tumors. In that same vein, we at Edtops believe in the immense potential of NK cells as a potential better alternative to engineered T cells because NK cells are naturally allogeneic and present potentially better safety profiles based on what has been seen in the clinic to date. However, NK cells themselves like to require gene editing to realize their full potential. And this diagram illustrates many, but by no means all, of the potential edits that can be made to NK cells 
to enhance their tumor targeting, tumor killing, and in vivo persistence in the patient being treated for cancer. We also believe in the potential to generate NK cells from IPSCs, known as INKs, as a means to ensure maximal product homogeneity for all our potential edits, and to create enough cells to not just treat patients within the current therapeutic scope today, but instead to be able to truly scale our cell therapy to a degree that this type of treatment could be an off-the-shelf cell-based medicine available truly to everyone who needs it. Given what I've shown you, it becomes clear that for generation of, the highly, ed of highly edited cell-based medicines, we need both efficient gene knockout and knock-in. And these edits must be achieved with high precision to avoid unwanted off-target changes in the genome itself. So this process begins with the selection of a nuclease. Here I'm showing you several nucleases within the suite of tools at Editas Medicine. These nucleases have different specificity and efficacy properties and target locations in the genome through a diverse set of PAMs shown here. When you look at the type and frequency of the PAM, you'll see that AS Cas8 offers the potential to target regions that SD Cas9 cannot. You'll all no also notice that its total targeting space is less than SD Cas9, and this could be a disadvantage for applications where you need to make an edit in a very specific location in the genome. However, for cell based medicines, especially those directed towards treating cancer, any applications almost exclusively involve knockout of unwanted genes to improve performance or knock in of new genes through a process known as target integration or knock in. Neither of these processes are generally constrained by the PAM. And so the takeaway here is that there's no tangible disadvantage to cas 12 as smaller PAM targeting space. And this restriction actually presents an advantage by reducing the number of potential off targets that could be accessible with this nucleus. So building on this potential specificity advantage further, it is well understood in the field that AS Caspway shows higher intrinsic specificity because of properties of the protein itself, as well as because of how guide RNAs are chemically synthesized. On the left, I'm showing the results of a digenome study we conducted across several matched genomic sites. And as you can see, for nearly all sites picked randomly, we see no off targets for AS Cas12A, or very few in the worst cases. Meanwhile, for almost every Cas9 guide, at these same match sites, we see many off-targets from this asset. Others have shown this to be the case in cells and offered biophysical data suggesting this is partly due to AS Cas12A's highly discriminatory seed region, which quickly rejects mismatches almost along the entire length of the protospacer before there is an opportunity for a cleavage event to occur. And this mismatch rejection mechanism is somewhat different than what researchers have um, observed in the field with SPCAS9. Moving to the panel on the right, we see that guide RNA chemical synthesis is another avenue for potential off targets, where you have to deal with the fact that the addition of each nucleotide during synthesis is never 100% perfect. And so truncations of a nucleotide and insertions of more than one nucleotide per each step can occur and do occur with surprisingly high frequency. As a result, you have guide RNAs that are created that, are, that perfectly match with an unintended target site in the genome where this could lead to end up. Because chemical synthesis occurs in the three prime to five prime direction, the accuracy is always going to be highest in your population of guide RNAs at the three prime end. As you're likely aware, AS Cas12A has a much shorter guide than SP Cas9. The targeting domain of SP Cas9 guides um, resides at the five prime end where synthesis errors will be highest and will result in a situation where SD Cas9 chemically synthesized guides contain far more potential synthesis errors and this should lead to more unwanted edits at off target sites in the genome. Cas12 is most tolerant to mismatch errors at the three prime end and this is where you can expect your guides to contain very few errors from synthesis. Because synthetic guides are the preferred way to produce and deliver guides for gene editing with RMPs or for in vivo with mRNA and LMPs, this presents a potential uh, safety issue, which is greatly mitigated if you are using Cas12A guide for gene editing instead. Now, given the specificity advantages to using AS Cas12A, why has this nucleus not been widely adopted in ex vivo applications in research and in the clinic? Well, as you can see here across these many different editing applications with WildSafe AS Cas12A, 
the total uh, efficiency of the nucleus is often substandard for these for gene editing. And where you want to achieve a very high editing result um, to ensure your product performs as intended. And as a result of this, and as, um, and as many others have shown, wild type A sequencing is generally inefficient for both gene knockout and also gene knock-in applications. And unfortunately, this limits its overall potential. So this is where Leon, Chris, and other researchers at IET set out to try and engineer a more active variant of AS Castlevay. I won't go into detail on their bacterial directed evolution process, and instead I'll just jump to the end result, which is that they identified two mutations, M537R and F870L, which showed higher activity in, the, in a biochemical assay and thus merited testing in mammalian cells, which they showed, then went on to show, indeed have higher activity result in higher activity. At this point, we initiate a collaboration with their team and immediately went to testing this potential higher activity nucleus in T cells and other primary cell types of high interest to us. Here you can see that all guides tested with this engineered ASCAS-12A called ULTRA from here on out, results in editing efficiencies approaching 100% in cells. And this, of course, was not the case for guides that we previously tested with wild-type ASCAS-12A. On the right, you can see a calculated potency, referred to as EC50, and this is 40-fold better on average across sites for ascas 12 Ultra compared to the wild type. Now, taking the slides I showed you previously, it is clear that uh, Ultra substantially improves the total editing and potency of uh, guides, uh, of guides across um, cancer cell lines and clinically relevant primary cell types like T cells and HSPC. It also improves HDR when looking, when using an SSODN with ultra RNPs in cancer cell lines, and this should greatly aid researchers looking to generate uh, specific changes um, to the genome in their projects. Building off of the previous slide, here we're showing how ultra enables the generation of engineered cell medicines. In targeting several different clinically relevant cell types with key clinically relevant edits, we show that in all cases we can achieve highly efficient editing, approaching 100% in nearly all instances. This was not achievable with wild type AS Castaway, despite many efforts to optimize the editing process. And importantly, the specific guides shown here for key targets in T cells, iPSCs, and NK cells are by no means the only guides which can edit with nearly 100% activity. And this is something researchers should see when using ULTRA in their own research going forward. So having shown that we uh, have solved the efficacy issue um, seen in wild-type cas with this ULTRA nuclease, we want to make sure that this increase in activity did not come with a strong decrease in specificity. Here we tested ULTRA and wild-type as cas with three clinically relevant guides that we previously found to be clean by DiGenome, GuideSeq, and our in silico prediction assay. In this case, I'm showing you on the, uh, the on-target editing in our guide to experiment on the left, which includes wild type and ultra, along with an SP Cas9 control, which we know has multiple off targets in order to validate the guide to gasset. All on-target editing is similar as we would expect. Moving to the right, you can see the total uh, read counts for all of our um, on and off targets in T cells by guide seek and all three of our CAS-12A guides um, show no off targets with either version of CAS-12A. The SP cas 9 positive control showed the previously expected off targets, confirming success of the guide to assay in this experiment. So in summary, we observe no new off targets with ULTRA, suggesting it has retained the high specificity consistently observed with wild-type nuclease. And importantly, we continue to see this retention of high specificity with the ultranuclease across dozens of targets at Editas. So having shown that ultra enables robust editing across targets and across cell types, we next decide to compare it to another engineered as cas a known as enhanced cas a as well as the HiFi version of the enhanced cas a So enhanced cas a was engineered to improve both activity and to expand the PAM targeting space for as cas a which is something I highlighted earlier as a limitation if you're attempting to edit very specific locations within the genome. This work was led by one of the speakers at this conference, Dr. Ben Kleinsteiber, 
who generated this variant wall in the Jung Laboratory, and I encourage you to read the manuscript if you have not. As we can see across cell types and targets, Ultra is more potent than enhanced, enhanced Cas12a, or the HIFI variant, in some cases by over an order of magnitude. For this reason, the data suggests that Ultra is the optimal nucleus to use for making knockout edits in cell therapy applications, whereas enhanced Cas12a importantly offers the alternative and important benefit of having an expanded PAM targeting range, which importantly better enables site-specific targeting for HDR or base editing applications. From he, here, we and our IDE colleagues work to address what might be um, both driving the superior potency of ultra over enhanced Cas12a, while also asking the important question of whether the ultra mutations and enhanced Cas12a mutations could be combined to achieve even greater total editing potency. On the left is a collection of many guides that show, that show the average potency improvements observed with ultra over the enhanced Cas12a and the HIFI variant. And as previously seen, you take a modest hit in potency with the HIFI as well, um, which was previously reported in the client's ever paper. In the middle panel, we show that at high concentrations of RMP, we see less editing with either enhanced Cas12a or HIFI across all guides at the B2 locus, but it's only modest. When we go to lower arm, the lower RMP dose, though, we retain most of the ultra editing activity, but we see a more noticeable drop in the enhanced Cas12a editing even more so with the high five variant. On the upper right panel, we said that the trend again holds for all guides tested at either the B-cell-11A or HBB loci in HSPCs. When we combine the ultra and enhanced Cas2A mutations as shown on the lower left panel um, and measure the editing efficiency at a suboptimal RMP concentration, we saw that there was a drop in potency and this was attributed to the expanded with enhanced Cas2A and we believe this was in, um, attributed to the expanded PAM targeting space, partially diluting out our effective RMP concentration that is available for the on-target site. This hypothesis supported by the SPEC-seq and SEAM-seq data covering binding and cutting in a biochemical setting, as shown in panels F and H for the enhanced Cas12a, and then that compared to the enhanced Cas12a plus the ultra com mutations combined in panels G and I. So it is clear that the general sequence specificity for the PAM and protospacer sequence um, to all other sequences is reduced in the combination variant. So in summary, the targeting specificity and overall on-target editing efficacy of the ultra-enhanced capsule combo is reduced, and we don't recommend using this combination variant for gene editing. Now that we're confident in moving forward exclusively with the ultra-nuclease, we tested whether we could achieve highly efficient multiplex editing using the allogenic T-cell edit combination, as you can recall from earlier, as our example. We observed that TRAC, B2M, and CTA all received editing at greater than 90% when all three RMPs were delivered simultaneously to T-cells. Importantly, we next tested whether, not only whether ULTRA could be used to achieve highly efficient single knock-in of a transgene packaged within the current AV6 gold standard, but also whether we could perform efficient dual knock-in of two transgene cargos delivered via AV6. On the left, you can see that we achieved nearly 60% knock-in of a GFP cargo when it was knocked into the track locus with ULTRA, and 60% um, knock-in of an M-cherry cargo when it was knocked into the B2M locus through the same process. Furthermore, we tested a range of RMP and AV6 cargo concentrations to find the optimal concentration to achieve the highest knockout and knock-in editing. And here we show that we achieved double transgene knock-in efficiencies of almost 40% in panel E on the left and panel A on the right. Importantly, both panel E and panel D show that we also retained our desired double knockout disruption of both TRAC and B2M in this experiment. Taken together, we believe that these high knock-in rates with ULTRA enable the use of as cas in the generation of highly edited T-cell medicines. Next, we want to test whether we could achieve similar knockout and knock-in results in NK cells, which are both hard to edit and also of high interest to us in the development of our iPSC-derived NK cell program, or INK program. A key edit to make in an NK cell in order to prevent suppression of NK cell activity by TGF-beta in the tumor microenvironment 
is to eliminate the target receptor, TGF beta receptor 2. We first show on the upper right panel that we could achieve potent editing of TGF beta receptor 2 in NK cells before going on to show in the lower left that this knockout edit indeed led to the expected phenotypic response, which is a decrease in SMAD phosphorylation in the presence of TGF beta, which is a downstream activity assay for this TGF beta, TGF beta receptor 2 interaction. Finally, in the lower right, we show that when we tested these TGF beta receptor 2 knockout cells in a 3D tumor uh, spheroid killing assay, that we could achieve robust killing of the tumor cells over the control when both NK cell populations were assayed in the presence of TGF beta. So taken together, we have shown that ultra enables highly efficient knockout editing in NK cells, which here leads to enhanced killing of tumor cells even in the presence of TGF beta. Having shown an important example um, or of making a knockout edit with ultra. Um, we then went on to test where we could achieve efficient knock-in and NK cells with our same AV6 vectors targeting to track in V2M. If we could achieve this, then we could try to put a CAR, such as one targeting EGFR, into a tumor spheroid killing assay like we had just done in the case of the TGF beta receptor 2 knockout. Recognition of the EGFR CAR to the EGFR ligand on a tumor cell should hopefully promote NK cell immediate killing of those EGFR positive tumor cells. We show that we um, could achieve nearly 50% knock in NK cells with ultra and an AAV6 targeting the track locus, which I also should point out likely isn't even the best location for knock in an NK cells since track is not actively expressed in NK cells unlike in T cells. But this is what we readily had available for us for testing, and despite this potential challenge, we saw that knock efficiency was quite high. We also showed efficiencies at a second location, the track locus as well and one example in the B2M locus as shown in the middle panel. We finally tested an EGFR CAR knock in NK cells with ultra in our spheroid assay and showed enhanced killing of the tumor cells over the GFP knock in control. So importantly, we've shown that ultra enables highly efficient knock in of transgene cargos in NK cells, which enable generation of engineered NK cell medicines with this ultra nuclease. Finally, we also thought it would be important to determine whether we could utilize ultra for knock-in of transgene cargos in HSBCs. And here um, we show that with the same AV6 format that we used in T cells and NK cells, we could achieve up to 30% knock-in in HSBCs at the B2M locus using this m cherry cargo. And this could enable potential clinical applications involving gene editing in this very important cell type. We also observed greater than 9% loss of MHC class 1, indicating highly efficient knockout of B2M in HSBCs in this knock-in experiment. Now for the final piece of the story today. At EDOS, we quickly saw the clinical potential of this highly active variant of as cas and We went on to incorporate the high-activity mutations into our own proprietary engineered as cas a which I've shown earlier has both high editing efficacy across cell types as well as high specificity, and leverage this nucleus to make edits at the HBG promoter to induce the production of fetal hemoglobin as a potential experimental treatment for sickle cell disease. We call this program Edit 301, and we filed an IND at the end of last year, and we are now testing this engineered AS Castaway variant in the clinic. Beyond the high um, editing and specificity advantages, as well as the guide manufacturing and synthesis fidelity advantage that I talked about earlier, it happened to be the case that the indel pattern of AS Castaway, which skews um, towards slightly larger um, indels compared to SPCAS9, better eliminated the repressor binding site at the HBG promoter than did SPCAS9. And this led to higher induction of phenyl hemoglobin. Um, not shown here, but up to levels of 50%. And this could be, this was higher than what was able to be achieved with SPCAS9 nuclease, even though both nucleases achieved the same total editing uh, indel rates, which were both above 90%. So for this reason, we believe EDIT301 has potential to be the best in class gene editing treatment for sickle cell disease, given its ability to reach these high levels of fetal hemo hemoglobin. So in summary, we collaborate with IDT scientists to demonstrate that AS Castove Ultra could edit nearly 100% efficiency across cell types and targets within a locus. 
Importantly, ALTER retains this high specificity observed with the wild type nuclease while also showing superior potency over enhanced capsulate across all targets and cell types tested. We show high editing rates across clinically relevant cell types. We show highly efficient multiplexing. And we show highly efficient single and dual site specific knock in. So, taken together, ALTER enables the rapid generation of therapeutic cell medicine. So I want to end the presentation today by noting that you too can work on this engineered ASCAS 12A and other amazing technologies at Atos Medicine and bring CRISPR medicines to patients. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. John, thank you very much for the talk. Let's uh, take a couple of questions before we wrap up your presentation. There is a question from um, there's a question from Andrew. Have you looked at using this high activity Cas 12A nuclease for in vivo applications? Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Um, as you can see, with all the uh, potential we show with uh, you know cell therapy here, um, clearly it appears there's a lot of value for this in vivo as well. So we are actively pursuing um, those those programs. Great, thank you so much. Um, there's another question here. Editus Medicine is developing a variety of gene editing medicines using both Cas9 and Cas12A. Which medicines are you using this high activity Cas12A for? And can you explain how you choose which nuclease to use for a particular disease? Yes, that's a great question. So um, as I showed on the, the slide with the different PAM um, frequencies, um, at the end of the day, you know, we have a suite of many different nucleases, and so depending on where we need to target, that PAM uh, targeting space ends up being important. Um, ultimately, though, really it comes down to using the best nuclease to achieve the outcome that we want to see in a patient, right? Um, with that being said, um, clearly in the ex vivo space, um, the, this engineered cast toll bay looks very, very attractive. Um, and so as a result of that, not only are we using it in edit 301, as I disclosed, um, we also are, this, this nucleus is also importantly part of our um, ongoing and very active uh, collaboration with Bristol Myers Squibb, um, and that's around CAR-T products. And also, of course, for the internal development of our IPSC-derived uh, or INK program as well. Great. Uh... Thank you, John. If anyone else has a question, feel free to submit it before we close off. So I'm just going to give people a few more seconds in case there are uh, any uh, other questions that need to be addressed. And if not, then we can close off. The next uh, talks will be starting shortly. So let's, uh, let's see if there's anything else that comes in, John, just to give us two seconds. I think this will be it. We'll wrap up. Thank you so much once again for the uh, for the presentation, and I hope to see you at the next one. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.